That counts for our CE credit too, right? <laughs> One. Correct. One credit? Yeah. You gotta spend the rest of the time for the other two. Okay. Um, Which is your steps in today? Has everybody signed in on the piece of paper here in the back? Oh, I am passing around. Boy, if something happens, I can email everybody. Come in. Everybody's got a laptop. Everybody's logged into the network, and everybody has brought up command. You're about to. Okay. I guess the stream's working. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the new websites that, that we're going to do with the KW subdomain. Um, when we were in team meeting yesterday, I stood up here and said that, hey, now you have new websites. During team meeting, we got an email from on high that said we're keeping Playster until the 22nd of this month. So, which is probably fine because I got a whole lot of people with hair on fire. It says I didn't back up my Playster website. How do I back up my Playster website? So does anybody here have a Playster website that they need to back up that I need to show you how to do that? Jake? Okay, Jake's the only one that I can show you how to do that afterwards. Have you put anything in your Playster website? Blog post or anything oh, like yeah. that? So the stuff that you want? Yeah. Okay, all right, then I'll show you how to pull that out question on that. Right. Just so uh, for future reference, it comes across as a zip file, but That's when we click to open it up, is it like HTML pages? No, or? it's just it's text. text. It's when just you text. when you unzip it, there will be four or five or six different files, mm -hmm. and you'll, you'll be able to figure out which one is which, but they're all text files. Then you can copy and paste it. Yeah, so it's not HTML, it's not pretty fied or anything like that, it's just raw text, which means that when you, we build your website, if you want to have a specific page for something, you can just cut and paste it in there and pretty fy it after that. Okay. Um, we also talked a little bit yesterday about domain names and GoDaddy and that sort of thing. Does anybody have their own domain that's not, you know, pete.kw.com? Okay. And so, have, uh, have you also looked, to, well, well, we'll go through that in just a second. So, it, is everybody using GoDaddy as their domain registrar? You are or not? I am. GoDaddy. Is anybody not? You're not. Okay. So, I've got a link that I'll show you in just a second. Somebody created a video the other day, that, or maybe it's not a video, but it's a step-by-step -step guide on how to go to, no pun intended, go to GoDaddy to repoint your website. But if you're going to use the same one that you've been using previously, then you don't have to do anything. Okay? That means you don't understand what I'm saying. We like that. Right. Okay. That's correct. You don't have to do anything. All right? So on the 20... Technically, on the 22nd, when you wake up, it's going to be repointed. It's not going to be a Placer website anymore. It's going to be this website that we're about to create right now. Okay? Um, let me turn on my screen. And we will flip this for the viewers at home. And hopefully, your screen looks somewhat like mine. Okay? Notice at the bottom, it says this website uses cookies, blah, 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 accept cookies. Yours may or may not say that, but that's a, it's a security thing from last year, the whole European deal. So you'll see the, the uh, accept cookies come up all the time, and so it's not, a, it's not a big deal. 
All right, so what we want to do. We should accept. Yeah, go ahead and accept cookies. And it's not that's not anything specific to Keller Williams. You'll go to a bunch of websites. There was a, the whole Facebook thing uh, in Europe. They call it GDPR. Europe went all crazy about security. And so now everybody has to have a HTTPS website. Anyway, so you don't get hacked. So you'll see that on just about every website you go to these days. When you accept the cookie, then it puts a cookie on your web browser so that when you come back to the site next time, they don't throw that up. But you're basically agreeing that they can track you. They know when you came, how long you stayed, what pages you went to. Okay. So the way that we're going to start is up here in the uh, top right corner where we say settings. No, that's not where I want to go. Let's do this. Here's the, here's, the, here's the easy way. This is the cheat sheet. Over in the top right corner, let me make this a little bigger for you. Is that easier to see? All right. This is a moving target. This panel over here on the right-hand side is every week they have different updates. So it just so happens that today or this week we have this thing. The very first button says, Agent Sites, set yours up through Kelly Guide. Well, that's going to be a shortcut for us. I'll show you a different way to get to it in just a second. But these, these messages change from week to week. So that's their way of, of communicating with you to say, hey, here's what's new within command. So today, simply click on Kelly Guide. It will take you to this page right here. And what there's question? If you think you are keeping, I guess you can, both your old website, paying Flankster, I guess it's 60 bucks or whatever it is, yep. until you feel it all smooths out. Okay. That's possible too. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting question. So, so Jake's question was, can I have two websites? Yes, you can have two websites. You can have three. As a matter of fact, technically, you have a website on FMLS, uh -huh. you have a website on Georgia MLS, you have a KW website. So every website you have, if search engine optimization is something that's important to you, you should have as many websites as you can and point them all back to your main website. Uh -huh. Now, if your question was, can I have jake.com uh -huh. in multiple locations, the answer is no. Okay. So if you want to have Playster host your website for you, then that's fine. You're still going to have a KW website on the KW subdomain that you can then put stuff in and link up to your Playster website okay. if you wanted to do that. But you can only have one domain, one, one, you can't have two domains pointing to two different websites. You can't have one domain pointing to two websites. Okay. <clears throat> all right, so on this particular screen, I thought I was logged in. Maybe it wasn't. I got we all kicked kicked out. Kicked 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 out. Kicked out. Yeah, yeah. 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 we may be. We may I tried to log in. And do more ironically, too, I've got yeah, some uh, on credit on monitoring, English. Peter, it's, from yeah, uh, some third party source that is paid for. Those okay. cookies are getting us. And. Okay. I came up, it was like some dark web, Trade. like my KW oh. email has been compromised just today. It probably hasn't. Now, all right, here's it another did, little if trick. You, if you read it now. Have you guys good. heard people uh, talk about incognito mode before? No, there you go. Yes or no? Yeah, yeah. sure. All right, so. In Chrome, you mean? In Chrome, there is something called incognito mode. <clears throat> and incognito mode is a way to use the web browser but when you get out of the web browser, it doesn't save any of the cookies or any of the cache. And so one of the things that happens with the KW website is they're making changes all the time. And so sometimes uh, you log on and you'll do something on your web page on, on your own command, and then all of a sudden they've changed something on the back end. So the cache on your web browser or the cookies on your web browser I'm now pointing somewhere that doesn't exist anymore. So nothing works. So one of the things they'll tell you is go into the incognito mode and try it again. So if you look at my screen up here in the top right corner, you see these three little dots? If 
you move your mouse up there, you'll see three little dots also. If you left click one time on those three little dots, you see where it says new incognito window? Uh -huh. This is on Chrome. If you're using Safari, it won't work. Okay. Or if you're using Firefox, it won't work. This is Chrome. So you can go into new incognito window, and it will open up a second Chrome window, and you can then go back to agent.kw.com and, and get into command that way also. I'm just going to cross my fingers and hopefully it doesn't kill me. Did you guys do it? You're back where we are we now? Went, yeah. I mean, I didn't do the, yeah, I just went oh. back to the okay. screen. All right. And you know what? It may happen again at some point this morning. So that's when they're, they're tweaking and tinkering with it all the time. So it is what it is. All right. So the three icons tell us what we're going to be doing today. We're going to choose the subdomain. We're going to choose a theme and then we're going to create a page. Make sense? The way that we do that is we click the button that says get started. And it kicked me out. I got through. Kick everybody else out also? Yeah. 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 Not yet. I'm not yet. I'm not touching anything. It will on a few minutes. It says pages unresponsive. Yeah. Oh boy. They must be having a fire drill in Austin also. Right? I'm it's in not key for what it's one. worth. Yeah. And, and I'm and I went back and came. It's showing nope, now me. I'm out. It shows me find your dream home. Well, yeah. Maybe you should find your dream website. <laughs> He's in bad yeah. Yep, that's what I'm getting to. When it rains, it pours. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm in. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Is everybody else in yet? No. All right, yep. hit refresh and see what happens. Still not in. The first line it says Kelly Guy. Oh, put on that. And that's when it sends me up. Uh, did you try incognito mode? <coughs> Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's try an incognito mode and see if that makes any difference. you on my screen up here on the front I showed you the Kelly guide all right I probably shouldn't have done that because this time next week it won't be there anymore so here's another way of getting to the same place if we come down here on the far left side to uh, what is, where am I looking for here let me make this smaller landing pages I left click one time on landing pages and there it comes out. Oh boy, we're gonna have a good time today. Might need that gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a refill, huh? Yeah. Let me just try and Just gin. All right. manager not on a public computer that's shared by nine million people now ah good point all right 
right. So I'm going to scroll. If you click on the left, the red button at the top right here, it makes those icons expand so you can actually see what they're supposed to do. So if you toggle the red button on and off. So I'm coming down here to landing pages. And notice, oh, <laughs> God. Yeah. Yeah. Privacy for me. I see that term landing pages a lot. Is that, is that another word for website, basically, more or less? Well, let me. So a landing page can be any page, anywhere. A lot of times, what happens? Let me. I'll just let me flip over here for just a second, kind of talk about it. So a landing page can be any page on any website anywhere. And if you think about it, your home page is where somebody, quote, lands when they type in, you know, uh, for sale by Pete.com, it comes to the, my, land, my home page. And then from there, people can go to any other page that's out there. So any of those other pages can be a landing page. Generally, when you talk about a landing page, you talk about it in a marketing context. And most of the time, a landing page is a page that does not link back anywhere else. And the, the concept and the idea is you want somebody to come to your landing page to take action. You don't want someone to come to a landing page and leave. So most of the time, a landing page does not have a link that allows you to go somewhere else. And the take action would be for them to enter information. That's at, oh, watch a video, give you your email, give them your email address. For instance, sometimes uh, you have an IDX. When I say IDX, you guys know what I'm talking about. When you have an IDX gateway from your web page. Uh, all right, everybody's familiar with Zillow. When you go to Zillow, what do you see? You can look up any house anywhere in the United States, right? Because what Zillow has is an IDX gateway to every single MLS in the country. And that's why consumers go to Zillow is because they can search for any house anywhere in the United States. But if you think about the FMLS that we use here in Atlanta, when you search the FMLS, you can only see houses in Atlanta, right? So it was genius for Zillow to do that. They went out and they got an IDX gateway to every single MLS in the country. So now you can go to one website and search for any house in any town. Well, that's exactly what Keller Williams is doing also. One of the things that they're doing is they're building an IDX gateway into every <coughs> single FML, MLS in the country so that now from your website that we might build today and we might not build today, <laughs> you will be able to give people an IDX gate. We won't call it an IDX gateway, but you'll give people the ability to look up any house in the United States, not just in Atlanta. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's kind of cool, because what you're ultimately trying to do is wean them off of Zillow and wean them onto genie.com, right? Okay. So I don't know if I, I can, you, you said what time is, I told you how to build a clock, but a landing page is not necessarily a home page. Okay, okay I'm coming down here to uh, sites, right? Landing page. You said landing page the first time. Right, where? Keep it going down. Yeah, my bad. I'll get there in a second. Accept my cookies. Landing pages. And then the, across the top up here it says landing pages, agent, site page, and neighborhood pages. Okay? There's a difference. A landing page is what we might use because we have something of value. You send them to this landing page. You may create a landing page that has value on it and part of one of the widgets that you put on the landing page is name, address, telephone number, okay? And that's the way you're collecting leads. Well, with a landing page, you can create a landing page and create the link and put it in an email. So you can literally send an email out and say, hey, I got, here's the greatest thing you ever wanted to know about something or another, click on the link. And when they click on the link, it takes them to your landing page. 
So we'll build a landing page in just a minute or two. And neighborhood pages are, if I click on neighborhood pages, if you'll notice on my screen up here, there is a neighborhood page for all these contacts that I have. What is that? You might ask. No, next door. Well, what that is, is a web page that I have built, an individual web page that I have built for Barney Rubble. This is his web page. Okay? His subdivision, everything that he ever wanted to know about his subdivision is right here. Okay? And for Austin, his is right here. It only works if you have their home address. If you don't have an address in the contact, then you got nothing for them. For, for neighborhood pages. So that's what neighborhood pages is. But what we're concerned about right now is the agent site page, the one in the middle. So left click on the one in the middle. If I'm not getting, uh, I'm back to the whole thing again, and I'm losing the KWM um, uh, icons on the side. Uh, are you in command? I believe so. Here it is. All right. Did you type agent or start over because you'll get pretty good at this? Agent.kw.com. He was at the guide. A Kelly's God's okay. agent. Yeah. All right. And that took us in the middle of the way. bottom where it says get started. You click on get started. And then it brought us to the. Okay. Yeah. Well, all right. So that's correct. That's where the Kelly guide. And, and I, I decided that I didn't want to show you that because that link won't be there next week. Yeah. So I wanted to show you how to get here, how to get back here next week. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go back to my home page that looks like this. If everybody clicks on the top. <coughs> On the little looks like the envelope, looks like a house that's home. If you go back to your home page and you scroll down to the bottom and it says landing pages, the next to the last icon, left click one time, should take you to this page right here. There. All right, I'm most interested in flying over where it says agent site page, I left click one time. Now my page looks a little different than yours because I already got stuff in mine. Okay, you don't have stuff in yours yet. So scroll down to the bottom of this screen and notice in the bottom left corner it says learn more with Kelly Guides. Left click that one time and guess where we are? Back where we started. Okay, so next week you'll know how to get back there. Okay. In the middle of on the middle bottom of these three icons, I want to click get started. Left click one time. And then your page will look somewhat like mine except up here where it says https, it probably already has your domain right here. No. It doesn't? Yeah. No, it does. It did before, but it, it did now it does. Now I'm yeah, just kicking me out. Yeah. All right, how many people are left handed? I mean, people right hand. Well, there you go. All right. Sorry, class is over. <laughs> Welcome to my world. And by the way, I'm logged out again. Me too. I don't. So I don't know what to say. I, I, you know, is this going to be a complete waste of time? Um, maybe. Well, I have a question while we're waiting for it to come back up. Okay. When I when it had my pre-filled in my domain name with you know my Keller Williams right. ID, but can you you were saying before and I'm not clear. I've got my GoDaddy domain name. Can I have both of those or only one domain name in there? Well, you, you, technically you can you can have both. So you let's can't do have this. Let me. Uh, I'm just going to wing it right now. I'm not sure that I'm going to accomplish anything. We may have to do this all over again. What is what is, you went out to GoDaddy and you created a domain? What's it called? Dunwoody Homes. That's because I had affordable. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It. Now, where does it point? It's not pointing anything the right now. Well, but it, when it was at Playster, yeah. where where was what was that domain? Yeah, I don't remember my Playster domain. Okay. Uh, <laughs> But it was probably first name, last name. Yeah, so I don't remember. Yeah. Kw.com. Yeah. yeah. All right. So. Yeah. Yeah. 
There it is. It's back with my name in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's back now. It's back in? Yeah. It's <laughs> <Same. laughs> Don't move anything. Don't breathe. All right? Don't scratch your eye. So dunwittyhomes.com is pointing to, let's just say, peteenglish.kw.com. Okay? Right. Now, this kw.com used to be hosted on top of Playster. So so what it used to look like, and you never could see this, but it actually looked like this, 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 at Playster.com, and it was all redirected. It was smoke and mirrors. Okay, so now KW, I don't know if we're actually hosting this on our own computers or not, but Dunwoody Homes was pointing to this right here, which this was actually pointing over here. Since this is going away, then it's still going to be pointed to this right here. And so what's on your screen right now, if it's working, is what your URL used to be. All right, and what's yours say, Bill? Uh, mine says uh, billhaas.kw.com, HTTPS. Okay, so it looks like that. Now, you also have another domain, correct? Correct. And what is it called? I've got a bunch of them, but... Uh, Do they all <coughs> point back to here? Uh, yes. So, so all right, that's a good point. You can have as many domains as you want. Buyfrombill.com, all right? Billshomes.com, greatestagentever.com, and they can all point wherever you want them to point, okay? Now, you, so what- and just to also clarify, so is what he's saying is, is it that you could point it towards google.com, it doesn't yeah, matter, correct? You, You've got this website that you own with an address and within the dashboard of GoDaddy or whoever the person you reserve the domain, you can just say point it towards whatever website. And in this case, we're pointing it towards my old place. That's website. correct. And, all right, so, so let's just say that it's October the 22nd and everything's cut over. So now Bill, if, if Bill likes this subdomain that he already has, and doesn't want to change it, then you don't have to change anything that's on your screen right now. It's locked. But if Bill doesn't like BillHaas.kw.com and he wants it to be <coughs> WilliamHaas.kw.com, then right now is where you change it. Okay. Make sense? But if you have a um, purchase domain, it's really irrelevant because you're going to use that. That's not correct. This. this is just going to be like coding. That's correct. Right, they won't see. It. Now, here's another little trick, and this is kind of an aside. All right, underneath, once we build your website, remember just a second ago before it crashed for the 44th time, we could do landing pages. Well, you can build a landing page, and let's just say that landing page, give me a subdivision Deerfield. Mm -hmm. Deerfield, okay? Now, you could go out and buy a domain called DeerfieldMarket.com. And guess what? You could point that to a sub to a, a, a landing page underneath BillHaas.kw.com. And literally, so you could do a marketing, if you were going to farm that subdivision, you could go out and create, you could buy that subdomain, not subdomain, you could buy that domain and go into this one page on your billhaas.kw.com and have all kinds of stuff on here about the market and pictures and balloons and pool parties and whatever it is that's relevant to that subdivision. And then you could, then you could do maybe direct mail, a postcard, that says, hey, here's the new market report for Deerfield, for the Deerfield subdivision. 
So you're literally sending a postcard out to all residents of the subdivision and it says DeerfieldMarket.com. It doesn't say anything about Bill Haas. But when they get that postcard and they type in DeerfieldMarket.com, it literally comes to BillHaas.com and comes down and comes to this one page called Deerfield <coughs> and that's where you put your market report. Does that make sense? That would be an idea of a landing page. Whether you have links off of Deerfield, you know, this set this page right here or not is kind of up to you. Or did I just confuse everybody? You got it? Okay. All right. Is your screen popped up again for the for the sake of mine? Probably not working. All right. So is your domain what you want it to be? Yes. Yes. Okay. If it's what you want it to be, then you're good to go. And I think it says something like select or claim. Claim domain. Okay. So go ahead and claim it. No, uh, it whenever it's doing the claim on mine, it's, it's an so, X with a, I mean, oh, a circle. Yeah, I'm just telling you that no good. It's oh, not allowing you to. John Green Senior with an E. Somebody's oh, already yeah, got that. So I did. I got Abby's now. I just, I'm not here so close. Well, well, they're only 150,000 Keller Williams agents. I'm guessing there might be another John Green somewhere. But mine's like that too. But I got Senior, like John Green SR. And it's well, now, well, so it well could be that something screwed up. Question, Chris? The subdomain and the domain at the top, if they're the same. That's okay, right? Do they need to be the same? Um, the subdomain you can change later. Yeah. Well, so the the you're going to any, anything that's in front of .kw.com. Oh, that's the claim. That's it's the a subdomain. So okay. kw.com is called a top-level domain, and uh, anything under in front of it is called a subdomain. So we're subdomains. We're all subdomains underneath Keller under kw.com. That's correct. So, for some reason, mine is when I go to claim domain, it's exactly. got a red, yeah. red So it doesn't like you. Right. Oh, like somebody else has. It like doesn't like anybody. Well, well I mean, that would probably me, be so part of the course today. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's yeah. probably yeah. not another yeah. one. Yeah. You can't there's put there's any spaces one. in there. No spaces, no periods, no underscores, no punctuation. All one word. It's got to be one word. Is anybody able to claim a domain? I did. I just claimed mine. Yeah. You were able to? Yeah, I did. Okay. Okay. See, look, mine just has like put J poster. Look, let's try to change it to something else. Just try to change your spelling and see if it'll clean it up. Maybe somebody's already doing that. Yeah. I think it says one or more fields. Oh, if I changed it. Well, is anyone ever going to see that? Do they need to know that? Well, I tell you what. I change it. I tell you what. Let's do this. Let's assume for the sake of conversation that it's locked and let's go on to something else. So okay. we don't we shouldn't have to do anything yeah. if we if we already okay. own it. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. For instance, mine used to be Pete-English.kw.com. I changed mine last week to for sale by Pete.kw.com and I claimed it and it, everything went through fine. Okay, so let's assume today that if we don't do anything, then you get jakeduffy.kw.com. Okay, so let's just keep going. So I want you to scroll down a little bit past the subdomain where it says marketing profile information, and I want you to left click one time on that. And this should pull from your profile information from your KW website, I mean your KWU profile marketing. So, so scroll through those fields, fill in stuff. When you get to telephone numbers, do not put dashes in there. Just put 10 digits. It won't get me to that Do you have a recommendation on compliance, legal, footer, link? Or Is there anything in there right now? No. no. Um, that's probably a Lynn question, but do put something in there right now. Okay. In fact, which field was that? Compliance. 
found C compliant. Because this, this, oh, is, this, this has been driving people crazy. Uh, if you don't, if you don't fill in all the fields, number one, and if you put dashes in the telephone numbers, number two, it kicks it back out. So the, the dashes were in the telephone number automatically, so we have to delete those well, out. Let's see what happens. You want me to try it if, if, if everything's in there like you like it, then just leave it and let's see what happens. You may or may not have anything in your bio biography. That's going to be because you may or may not have put anything in your in your MyKW website. Now I'm assuming we call it, none of this is permanent. We can edit it. Things. Absolutely. You know, we Everything that we're it. doing, you can edit. That's correct. So if Jake decides to change his name, you can come in here and edit it. Oh, definitely not that one. Mine is good. Back down. Is that anything yet? If it's a team or business name, you're on file. You said you got to have something. Oh, you got to save and continue first. If you do, you like that name? Did you click on marketing? Yeah. So that's the one you want. Oh, you want to claim this red? One click. Yeah, I got that. Scroll down to the Claimed it. Oh, yeah. It's saved. More and more required fields. Oh, that make it smaller. Maybe can you make it? I do like control. I forget or command or minus. Maybe there's something you just can't see. It's like, oh, well, you got like, no, like, 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 like make the web I, on the map would be command minus or, or plus. And then, I actually thought we were putting in. There. So the bi bibliography did not come over. Uh, you mean your biography? Yeah. It didn't come over. Well, just for now, just give me a sentence or something. Say, Jeannie's the greatest person ever. You just open your placer too and copy and paste it in. No, you're in. And you said we should put something in the compliance and label folder. Yes. Like yeah, go just ahead. Anything. Like, yeah. I love you. Thank you for being you. You can, but just remember to come back and change it. One of the ones you'll see in often is each Keller Williams real time. Ah, and this is our marketing profile. Yeah, that's good. It's stuff, and then right there. Maybe it's because I didn't get to this page yeah. the same way as you. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. Hmm. So when you put in title and link, is that what y'all were talking about? Oh, okay. This is uh, from correct. Questions? If you I want to get back to that profile, I don't know. Because once you do it, it says congratulations. But if you want to go make a change, how do you go back? Okay. So you hit save and continue? Is that what you did? Yes, and then it said congratulations. All right. Now over to the left, does it say back at the bottom of your page? Over to yeah. The, oh, it says back. back. Oh, I see. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right, so when you hit, now, I don't, do you guys have profile pictures and logos and all that kind of stuff? Got my profile, <clears throat> don't have to download my logo. Okay. <coughs> so, this happens sometimes, it, it makes, my, since I've already filled mine out, I don't know if it actually tells you or not, but doesn't it tell you the size of the image that they're looking for? Mm, or not? Okay. Uh, I was working with somebody earlier, either this week or last week, and the, one of the things that KW, this particular website is looking for, is the photo of yourself is square. Well, if the photo on the old KW, my KW, was rectangle, then when you use the rectangle photo, and they're looking for square, then your head's all discombobulated and it cuts off the top of your forehead. So what you're going to, and this has nothing to do with command today, but it's, be, it's something to remember, is you need to, if you've got these images, and generally an image is either going to be a JPEG image or what's called a PNG image. So what you'll need to do is go and edit those images so that you have them square. Now if you're using things like Instagram and some parts of Facebook, they're looking for square images also. So it's a good idea that all these images that you use, whether it's a headshot of you, whether it's your logo for your particular company that you've come up with, you probably need to have these logos <coughs> wide and you need to have them square 
and you need to have them tall and just all kinds of stuff. Here's a little trick. That some, there's no way you can remember what size an image needs to be for each one of these social media things that you're using. But if you open up a new tab on your browser and you go to the Google and you say image size image sizes for social media generally there'll be a couple of articles that will tell you nice. that if you're posting in Instagram it needs to be this by this if you're posting in Facebook it needs to be that by that all right so that will give you what they should be for the various social media there's also another website called Canva C-A-N-V-A canva.com which is a really good website and Canva actually has templates so if you wanted to create something specifically for LinkedIn it will already have the sizes and you simply put your image in that and use it in LinkedIn if you want to use it in Instagram you know they're all relative right so Canva is a very good tool to use is that C-A-N-V-A? That is. Yeah. And, in, and, and unless you need, to, unless you want to buy some specific clip art from them or images from them, it's free. So they do have a pro version that allows you to do more stuff. But if you've never used it to start with, I'd suggest walking before you run, because you can do a lot with Canva, and, and certainly not only can you edit images, but you can. Let's say that you went out and you took a picture of you know a house or something like that with Canva then you can lay over the address on top of it you know white type or something like that and prettify it so but my point is the graphics on this web page that you're building right here probably need to be square do you mind bringing the screen back down uh, no 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 you're the screen from here? the from the ceiling because oh, I'm sorry. the, the other thing is showing yeah. up Got it. Pete, there was a line that says compliance legal foot early. Do we have to do anything there? Um, you don't. Well, let me see if I can find it. It's at the bottom. It's right after compliance legal footer. Then there's a compliance legal footer link. <coughs> oh, let me hit. The, you did say continue. No, I'm on that same page. Uh, I think it's under subdomain. What? You go back. I thought I need to go back. Profile, marketing yeah, I, profile. I touched my screen. Oh, you got to touch it. Marketing screen. profile oh, information. Cool. <laughs> it didn't, this thing didn't bring it out. Yeah, there's all that stuff, yeah. That's weird. Further, 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 further. Compliance yeah. footer. All right. But here's what I put in mind. I know, but what about the compliance legal footer link? Does anything have to go in there? Uh, as you can see, all I did is I put these words right here. Okay? I didn't put a link. Now, if you want to put a link, then you need to put the entire link, including the HTTP or the HTTPS. If, do you have on your current web page, do you have a compliance link? Okay. Then, then I, to make it easy, then I would yeah. suggest just putting some type in here right now, okay. not necessarily putting a, a link that goes anywhere. What did you have licensed? But uh, what did I have? I'm sure it was. Let me see. I said license in the state of Georgia. <clears throat> All information provided is deemed reliable, but is not guaranteed should be independently verified. Properties are subject to prior sale or rental. Um, all right, let me, you see up here, I just went up just a tab where it says compliance legal footer. Um, you see my screen on the screen up front on the board? You see that copyright symbol? People ask me all the time, how'd you do that? How'd you make that copyright symbol? Anybody want to know how to do that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. On your keyboard, on, on a big keyboard, you will have a, a, a numeric keypad over on the right-hand side of your keypad yeah. on your keyboard. On, on your computer, you may or may not. The way that you get these funky characters right there is you hold the Alt key down 
and without letting up, you hit the numeric key 0169. I believe that's correct. Somebody can try it and tell me what pops up. You hold down the... Hold down the Alt key yep. without letting up and hit the numeric number 0169. And Not you, the pound sign, but just the digits. That's correct, just the digits. And you do need the zero. Did that work? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now, if that worked, you got, we ought to be able to do all kinds of different crazy things, right? All right, that is called an extended ASCII character set. So if you open up a new web page and you go to the Google and you say extended ASCII character set, you'll find a bazillion pages that all these little wing dings and things, if you want to use them, like the spades or the hearts or all that, kind of like an emoji, it will tell you how to do it. And generally, it always revolves around holding down the Alt key and the numeric keys. So Alt 071 is going to be something different, you know. So are you doing this from like within the field, like you put your cursor within the field of where you want to type something? Correct. You can use it anywhere. You can use it in Word. You can use it in Excel. You can use it anywhere. Okay, I didn't get that. 0, 1, no. 6, 9. I got some other weird. Okay. Zero, zero, alt, zero, one, six, nine. Not Alt. Hold down the Alt key and don't let up. Yes. I'm the 0, 1, 6, 9. I got some on the Apple just. Yeah, to look at it, it's like... Uh, okay. <clears throat> well, I'm kind of off in the weeds, but anyway, some people all the time ask me how you do that copyright symbol. You can do trademark symbols. You can do, like, the temperature symbols. You can do plus mm -hmm. minus symbols. You know, sometimes you want to say, hey, the, the square footage in this house is 3,000 square feet plus or minus. What's the uh, trademark? Yeah. Uh, the copyright? No, trademark. I don't know off the top of my head. I thought I was... Pretty impressive or just knowing that. Whatever. Yeah, register trademark, right? Yeah, TM, I don't know what it is off the top of my head, but you, can, you, can, you can Google it. If you Google it, it's trademark ASCII character, trademark extended ASCII character set, and it'll probably say 0755 or something like that. Okay, let's move on. All right, so everybody so far has done save and continue. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go save and continue. And now we're at number two, which is style and theme. Today, you only have two themes, the red theme or the dark theme. Choose one. You can always come back and change it. One more field is needed. Did you say when you put in your phone number? No digits. I mean, no, no dashes. Space. Mine took it with dashes. It's showing up with dashes. Your left hand or right hand? I'm right hand. There you go. Because mine is saying there's something not, what? I'll try taking the dashes out. It could, it could be the telephone number. It could be that you don't have something in one of the fields. Any field that's marked red has to have something. Yeah, even absolutely. The biography, even if you put I one. put something in the biography. Um, the the name. second link, I'll do something. I did team name. Did you, all right, the link, is it an HTTP www link? If it is, I would suggest just for this exercise, just don't use any links because it's got to be a fully qualified link in order to work. It doesn't tell you what, what's not working. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It is what it is for the time being. All right. Now, notice up here on the screen, you see right here where I said search for any home anywhere. Yours doesn't say that. No, it says find your dream home. That's correct. So if you go over there where it says find your dream home and you backspace over that and you put in something else, then yours is going to pop up right here. Okay? So go ahead and try it. The reason that I put this right here is because the concept of Zillow is any house anywhere. Now, it's logical that anybody that's going to come to your respective website is only going to be interested in Atlanta. So you can type whatever you want to right here. I just wanted to make sure that if somebody landed on my page, they could realize that I'm the new Zillow. Okay. Everybody with me so far? No. 
All right. Well, who said no? Me. It won't let me do it. It won't let you come to you the next page. You've got to do it on the right side. On yeah, the, I can't. On the get box there, on the right. So you're still at, at number one? Yeah, it won't let me get out of that. So mm. doesn't like something like that. All right. I, I can't get past there. Continue you're not getting past there. I had a problem with that too. You start if you don't complete, like if you did one of those footers and you didn't do it right, it's not going to like that. So I, you can hit the back button and then try save and continue again, and it should advance you. Yeah, that's, that's logical. So what you've seen so here is, is irrespective of what you type in here, you, everybody about. knows you can go back and edit it, correct? Mm -hmm. So if you just fill something in the field, you can always come back and edit it. One or more things are completed. Correct. <laughs> well, so go backwards. You want you to go back to something? Yeah, just just go back and, and don't even put anything and go forward and see if it takes it. So you would never let me claim my claim my domain. Could that be the problem? Well, we we jumped past that. We went on past that. Did, did you try to put in another domain? No. Okay. Well, I kicked out everything. I Okay, so let me keep going yeah, because I'm already over time anyway. Now I'm at the point in section number two, style and theme, where it says upload a home page hero image. And when you scroll down, it says recommended size is 1200 by 1200 and you can upload five images. What it doesn't tell you is the only way you're going to upload five images is if you delete five images first. So you can have <laughs> any five images you want, but you cannot have ten images and only use five. So the five images that you have right there that are default are the five images. And what happens, uh, a lot of people, you remember, you've seen the, these websites where you go to the website and the images slide by. Yeah. Okay, that's no good for search engine optimization anymore, but it is pretty. Yeah. So what happens if you'll notice that this back, this picture that's right here of all these houses, the aerial view, uh -huh. what's going to happen is when you come, when, it, when the site goes live on the 22nd, the first time you ever come to your site, it's going to have image number one right here. And then the second time you come, it's going to have image number two. And so it rotates every time someone visits. So the concept is if you have a customer or prospect and they come to your website, first time they come, they're going to see image number one. The next time, they're going to see image number two. So if you have images on your computer right now and they're 1,200 by 1,200, what difference does it make? Pete, would it work if my image was 2,400 by 2,400? Yes, it would. But your website is going to load much slower. Google is all about fast. So theoretically, since it's 1,200 by 1,200, that's square. You could have a 600 by 600 image and it would load faster and it would probably look fine. So what they're, they're making a suggestion of 1,200 by 1,200, not 8,000 by 8,000. Because you've been to web pages before. When you go to the web page, it just goes creep, 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 creep. It's because they're using massive images. And that's really bad for search engine optimization. And so they're always preaching about, you know, don't use copyrighted images. So I guess it would be a good thing not to use somebody else's photograph. Make sure you have copyright. Well, privilege you, have a, you could absolutely, depending on where you, when you have a listing and you have someone come in and take pictures, depending on the relationship you have and the license you have with a photographer, then you could absolutely use photos from a previous listing if you wanted to. But to go to the Google and find some aerial shot of Atlanta skyline, you're asking for trouble. And you can get your proverbial hiney in a crack. Yeah. Okay. All right. Does anybody have pictures? They want to delete one of the standard pictures and upload their own picture. Have you tried it? Did it work? I don't have any pictures to try. Okay. To well, so you know that you can do it. <laughs> Anything that we do today, you can come back and edit. If you get tired of these five pictures, bring up some more. So I'm going to roll my. I'm going to scroll down past this, and I'm going to hit save and continue. 
And that puts us to step number three, customize your site's content. This is where it gets a little tricky. All right. It, when you came to navigation, did your screen look like my screen? It was not expanded or was it expanded? It was not expanded. Okay. Yeah, so if you left click one time on navigation, it says company profile, about me, and contact us. Or it might not be in that order. No, that's what mine says. Yeah. Okay. Like that. You see these little dots out to the left? If you left click <laughs> and drag, you can rearrange them. Okay. So basically what we're doing is we're changing the menu system. That when you build this website, in the top right corner there will be a drop down arrow and, and that drop down arrow is this navigation over here. So it's not anything to lose any sleep about, but if you wanted to rejigger it so that the very first thing was about me, and you left click and you drag it and drop it above company profile. Okay. Now on my screen up here, company profile is highlighted, which means that everything that we're about to edit, we're editing the company profile page. So as I scroll down, I come to search engine optimization. Page title, for sale by Pete. Now notice somewhere over here, maybe it didn't. All right, so for sale. That's not where I wanted it. Well, this is, this is where we're going to build this particular page on our website. <coughs> so you can have the title be anything you want to. If you get lost, click over the little I for information. The name for this page as it appears in Navigations. Remember Navigations is the drop down I was telling you about a while ago? The URL slug, all right, don't get all wrapped around the axle on this one, but a slug is a it's a word. I mean, it's, it's a it's a web thing. It always has the slash, and it's always lowercase, and there are no spaces. My particular slug is called slash about dash us. If I was to put slash about space us, it would not work. Okay. If I was to put slash Pete is the greatest guy in the world, it would not work. But if I put slash Pete dash is dash the dash greatest dash guy dash in dash the dash world, it would work. Okay? That's just a web thing. Don't worry about slugs. Slugs sometimes, if you have a big website and you have a whole bunch of articles and you have a whole bunch of information about subdivisions, you have a whole bunch of pages then the slug you use is important to Google. But unless you guys are going to build a whole bunch of pages, I wouldn't get worried about this. But if you're serious about search engine optimization, then you would consider using the slug, the keyword of this particular page that you're building. Okay? All right. Uh, SEO description, when you go to Google and you type in uh, real estate something another and, it, and the first page has all these pages, correct? If you hover over one, it will usually give you a little bit more information. That's where this is coming from right here. Okay, so whatever you type here is what would show up if somebody finds you in Google. Maybe I should say when they find you in Google, right? I'm going to scroll down a little bit further and then I'm going to left click on the triangle that says content. And if you'll notice that every time I change something on the right hand side, it's changing it over here on the left hand side. So this is giving you a preview of what it's going to look like. Does that make sense? Where'd you get that now? I came down here to content. All right, at, you, you first thing we did was navigation, then we went to search engine optimization, and then we came down to content on the right hand side. And 
and at the top right we're still in step three customize your site's content content and I'm going to come down here so page header it says company profile if I change the word over here to Jake is great notice over here in the middle on my picture it says Jake is great okay so everything that we're changing on the right hand side you can see what it looks like on the left hand side so I'm I think I got into the about me page and it's true is that like a different th is yeah that, yeah that's where we're supposed to be you, you can you remember <laughs> when we were up here at navigation just a minute ago uh, which one is which one is dark got it. so click on the one that you want to edit how do you change to edit those different pages I can see where you can move them. Let's see. When well, I click on it, it doesn't. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. This, what we're going through right now is a template. Mm -hmm. I'll show you how to go in the back end in just a second. Okay. Which is where you'll also go in to edit any other additional pages that you might want to create. Okay. All right. So I went back to, to content. And notice when I get to section one headline. Here it is over on the left hand side and it says enter headline description. So I can change all that right here. I can change the description right here and I can change the image. Okay. And it says recommended size is 360 by 360. <coughs> well guess what? 360 by 360 is the same size as 1200 by 1200, isn't it? It's square. But since it's a smaller image it loads faster. Sometimes for instance, uh, back on those photos that we were looking at a while ago, it was saying 1200 by 1200 uh -huh. because that's a nice high resolution, high quality. But you could also have this exact same picture and you could have it 100 by 100. And if you were to Fast. upload that, it would upload much faster, but it would also be grainy and look like crap. Okay. 1200 by 1200 is a gracious plan. My guess is 600 by 600 would look just fine and nobody would ever be able to tell the difference. Okay, I keep scrolling down and then I've got footer title, I got footer paragraph, and as you can see, as I scroll down, everything that I put in here, it looks, it shows you what it's going to look like on the left hand side. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hit continue. And now I'm at the About Pete page, which is what you were asking about just a minute ago, Bill. I think you were just ahead of me. So, question for you, Pete. Um, okay. On the. Uh, maybe I. Under the search that you talk about, slug. And the SEO description, what is that? It says, tell customers about the company. Well, when you go to, if, if you had another tab open and you went to Google, yeah, and you typed in uh, Ford parts, yeah, it's going to show you a whole bunch of websites. Right, right. And, and, and let's say that you, that you flew with your mouse, you flew mm -hmm. over the very first uh, rendering that it yeah. found, a, a slug is going to pop up. And it's going to say, here's the website, and then it's going to have Ford parts manufactured in America by Americans for Americans, whatever. Okay. That's where the SEO part, and the reason that you want to do that is because you, they used to call it keyword stuffing, and you would stuff a bunch of words. So if Alpharetta, 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 Alpharetta Real Estate, Alpharetta Real Estate, well, they caught on to all that. So you need to put something that's relevant, but you want to use keywords that people might type into Google and they might find you because of that. Now, if the only thing you're going to have is these few web pages, they'll never find you. Okay. But if you do blog posts and all kinds of stuff like that, then you've got a much better probability of being found. 
especially if it's unique. Okay, so we went from navigation to about us, and I can change all that information, and I hit continue. That takes us to the next page, which is the contact us page. All right. Mm -hmm. So you're either ahead of me or behind me, but you're you're on, you're in the ball game. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm out. I'm out of the game. <laughs> you're out of the game. Not in the game. Okay. Let me get beyond. Yeah. And then, lastly, we will do save and continue, and it brings us back to where we started. Okay. Do you so under company profile? You got about me. That's going to be about us. Well, it's going to be in your case. It'd be about you and Debbie, right? Kathy, right? Kathy. And then uh, company profile. Do we? It'd be great to have some content regarding the market center and KW that we could all, that is strong. It's up to you. Nobody in Google's ever gonna find you if, you if they type Keller Williams. Okay, so this is what people see. I'm not talking about the search engine optimi optimization okay. where, where it has, where you're navigating home and you go to your content. Mm -hmm. Page header, intro paragraph, headlines, you know, most real estate websites, you don't want to have the same content about you yourself and also in, under yourself about me and about the company. Uh, that's, yeah, I would agree with that. It almost looks like if that, I saw it was that was the company, your real estate business, that wasn't KW company, that was Correct. your company, right? Correct. Okay. But you can do anything you want to do. Yeah. I mean, if you think, well, look, I, you know, Pete Incorporated has no name recognition, so I'm going to use Keller Williams. Yeah. Then you can absolutely. Well, you don't want to. I mean, if you. You can do whatever you want. Yes. Yeah. But putting about me and type having information about you and you are the company, and then typing right. company profile right. and having the same stuff there is. All right. And the navigation that we we're talking about. Right now, we got three pages. Right. About a company, about me, and whatever the other one was. Contact, right. me. Contact me, right? Well, we can also, and, and when we go to navigation, it shows the three drop downs. Well, we can build as many pages as we want. So we can absolutely go and now create another page called About Keller Williams and have as much stuff out there as you want. You know, About Kathy, About Bill, right? right. You, you know, uh, previous listings, you know, you, you can put anything you want out there. But what we just did is we went through a template to build your first web page, yep. website, if you will, okay? Now, how did I get here? Remember how we got here? We, we cheated earlier. I cheated earlier because I was on the home page and I said, click on this link that says Kelly Guides. But I shouldn't have done that because it's not going to be there next week. So I went to my the home page of command. I scrolled all the way down to the bottom where it said landing pages. You with me? I left click one time on landing pages. And hopefully it'll come up and not blow up. Bottom left corner it says waiting for console.command.kw.com. So hopefully it'll come up in just a second. So have they pushed back when these sites are going live then since they push back the placer? When are these going so live? So technically it's the same thing. Okay. So what's going to happen is on the 22nd, placer goes away, and then whatever is wherever it's pointed to whatever your .kw is called now is going to show up. Okay. So it's one and the same. All right. How did I get here? In the left hand column over here, I clicked on the little icon that says uh, sites. Left click, and here are all my site pages. I'm on landing pages right now, but if I left click over here on agent site page, guess what? Those sites that you just created, those pages that you just created now show up. I hope. 
Do they? I've got two on there, yeah. I'm not what thinking. are they called? Uh, I don't know, some number dash contact us and some number dash about us. Okay, which is the two pages that you edited just a second right. ago. Okay, now, uh, in my case, it's 615755 dash about me, and there's an eyeball over here in the middle, which means, let me take a look at that page, and then to the far right hand side, there are three dots, and if I hover over that, and I left click on that, it says edit. Mm -hmm. So now I can go back and explicitly edit this particular page. Okay? Which also means that I can do all kinds of widgets and put forms in there and put more icons and all. I can prettify it to my heart's content. Or I can shoot both my feet off. So how do you add the widgets? All right. The question was, how do I add the widgets? Let me go back to my landing pages, and you're on the land. I mean, uh, to my to my sites. You're there, correct? Mm -hmm. And then at the top it says landing pages, agent site page, and neighborhood pages. I'm going to go to agent site page, and it should show you. Let's just say you're about me page. Okay. I'm going to come to the far right hand side where the three dots are, and I'm going to left click one time. And I'm going to click on the word edit. And here is that page. Okay? If I scroll down, there's really not anything there to speak of. Okay? But in the bottom right corner, it says configure widgets. See it? I left click on configure widgets. It says company profile. And here's how I can change it from Jake is great to Jake is not so great. Hey. Right. If I wanted a header image, I could drop it right there. Here's my section. This is, we're basically doing everything that we did in that little template just a minute ago. But, uh, and then we can hit save and, save and apply. And then at the top we say save changes. Were I you, I would... Come over, I would come back over here to my landing page. Do you have any landing pages at all? Okay, so where you get into it, and, and this, is, this is, is outside the subject of what we're talking about today. So now you get into what's called design. And if you notice on the far left corner over there, there's a little icon called design. And what design allows you to do is go in here and create all these pretty pages not only can you create landing pages but you can also create email templates so when we start talking about marketing and how do I send something out to people mm. you, can, you can go into design and you can create these templates so that you can send them for email campaigns and things like that you can you can actually go in there with I haven't done it but you can go in there to design and you can change your, you may have a listing uh, presentation that you want to do, something like that. You can go in there and redesign that. It's sort of like, it's sort of like Canva version 1.0. Thanks, Pete. I got it right. You got it. it. So, so basically what we've talked about today mm -hmm. is your subdomain, if you like it, you don't have to do anything. But if you want, then we've gone through the template in how to go out and edit what shows up on your web page. And this is what will go live on the 22nd. Questions? Do you have a little time afterwards so we can figure out why my sure. that one page mm -hmm. wasn't? Because mm -hmm. then I couldn't yeah. get to anything else. I'm just, I've got some questions, but unless you look at it, it probably won't make sense. But I'm at the agent sites. So I just, um, like on the about us. So I'm at, that, I'm at that agent site pages, and it has the three pages that we've been working on. When I click, mine has a preview button because I have one present. When I click the About Us, 
I'm assuming this is what the web page is going to look like, i.e., right here, about us, right? Correct. So this is what it's going to look like, correct? So down here, I've got our thing, but it has KWD doing business as name, correct? Logo. So where do how do I change that? Where did that come from? That's a good question. All right. So all right. So let's go back and is there an X? Um, go back to the page and hit the edit over there. And then I'll scroll down. Is this the correct page? No, I is it come from the profile where we want to go? No, I was doing the about us. Okay. All right. Put that go. Uh, that's the company for the wages. Okay, so and then click on the uh, company profile right there. Okay, so. But I had opened up about us. Whoops. Uh, oh, okay, all right. So you see these three icons in the top there? This is what it will look like on the desktop. This is what it will look like on a tablet. And this is what it will look like on a cell phone. Uh, but about us is assigned to company profile for some reason. Okay, so I guess that's well, I guess what I would suggest is change something so that you know, or you know what, change this to say about us, so that you know. All right, and then, okay. and then save and apply, mm -hmm. and save changes. Oops. Sorry, it's a touch screen. All right, and now go back and look at it, and let's see what it looks like. To so this one, yep. Let's see what that looks like. Different page, isn't it? I guess. Okay. Now it's about let's talk. This is this is even a different one now. This is the uh, uh, one where they really want you to. It's the uh, contact us. Well, it's kind of aggravating. Isn't it? Okay, I'm just not going to worry about it right now. I get the <laughs> overall concept <laughs> on how to edit it. And so. <coughs> There, so we've simply talked about the agent website. Remember when I showed you how to go to the, uh, where it said sites on the far left? Yeah. And then at the top it showed landing pages and an agent site and then neighborhood pages? Uh -huh. Okay, so you can edit all of those. I would suggest if you're interested in the whole design thing, you know, it's kind of like, Remember a hundred years ago when desktop publishing came out and everybody had to have Ventura Publisher for desktop publishing? And man, there was some horrendous looking stuff out there. But boy, we had the tools, didn't we? So if you want to create another page, you go create another page and play around with design. But I would not go in to design and mess with these template pages that you have. Because if you screw it up, it's going to look like crap, and it's going to be hard to get back the way it was. So just go create a net new page and screw around with it any way you want to. I mean, that's what I've done. Let me see can if you I copy pages. I believe you can. I think they call it duplicate. Um, let's see. Oh, let's see. let me go down here to design. Where is design? There's designs. All right. So notice it says my design templates. Well, all these are designs, but you also have the ability to do, um, to take the ones that they have. So let's say t Pete's Test 01, let's see. All right, so there's one right there that I created. <coughs> it looks like crap, but you just gotta play with it. You got all these tools over here, this is called a site, site builder kind of stuff. It allow you wanna have columns and, and text all buttons and all this kind of stuff. You can get wrapped around the axle real fast on this. That's a, but what does it look like on a desktop? That's what the page is going to look like on a desktop. This is what it's going to look like on a phone. All right? Desktop, phone. Now, when you start talking about marketing and you start sending emails to people, over 50% of the people read emails on a mobile device today. So if you're not designing your message so that it's responsive or mobile friendly, then it's going to look like crap and, you know, it's going to reflect on you. Okay? I'm going to ask you 
Institute for, um, I guess I'm going to go back to saving this for about two months and then see how Thank things work out. I, I think that I think that it's going to get better. I mean, we have yeah. we had a whole bunch of hiccups today, yeah. and it's you know it's not ready for prime time. But I can tell you this: if you start messing with it now, when it is ready, you're going to be way ahead of the curve. Yeah, I see that. That's good. Why? I, it seems like you have existing websites. Well, you can transfer the copy. Yeah, but you can't transfer, transfer the design. But it also so your place your website, it was all pretty and everything? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that's not, it's not going to do. Your place your website, your new website is not going to look anything like your place your website yeah. did. But the copy that you have, you can have your email to use certain pictures. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. All right, Jim, let's see. It sounds like we may both have, we both can't get by, get past the screen. I'll tell you what, let me grab a chair. Let's try something else. Let me see if we can throw it up here. 